Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased technical analysis and looking at the 15 minute chart here you can see the price action for the past week and it's been overall choppy, we had this nice inverse, uh, excuse me, we had this nice head and shoulder pattern here with the neckline around the 395 to 395.5 zone, that's the white lines that you see, we broke it down, uh, was it Thursday? And we saw that that neckline was treated as a resistant, what, which was a bearish price action, but the next day gapped above it and it just broke it down intraday, but at the end of the day closed above it. So we're getting a lot of mixed signals from the, the market right now, from the price action. Market makers are looking to fake us out. Now, I want to talk about the market phase we are in a chop phase the market has a trend phase and the chop phase best time to swing positions is when the market is in the uh, it's in the trend phase because the market picks a direction and moves in that direction chop phase however get a lot of you know trappy price action with you know not much follow through you know meant to trick both bulls and bears out as far as retail traders go but it also helps to build strength for the next move so in today's video i want to talk about when we can possibly see the next trend move and what triggers we need to pay attention for all right so let's go okay so that was the 15 minute chart I want to take us to the four hour chart okay i i usually talk about the daily chart i want to talk about the four hour chart today i have this as you say triangle pattern right here that i have forming okay now as i mentioned in the intro that we're in a chop phase usually in the chop phase like i said it's to trick out both bulls and bears or to build strength for the next trend move and when we get into these chop phases we get patterns like bear flags bull flags pennants you know falling wedges uh channels for uh to represent the chop range we'll get patterns like that when we get patterns like that that's very helpful if you're able to identify the pattern because it can give you an idea of when the chop phase could potentially end all right so it's chopping as you can see in this triangle pattern uh i got the breakout I got the breakout of this triangle pattern around 396.7. Uh, Keep in mind, by the time it's Monday, it could get down a little lower, okay? So if I'm looking at the time here, uh, Monday, November 21st, around 8 o'clock, you know, this is a four-hour chart. The breakout would be around 396.3-ish, okay? So we'll see what where the market opens. Obviously, if the market opens above or it gaps above, we got to watch for the... The next level, uh, as far as resistance and support goes, relative to where it opens. Like here, for example, a lot of people, they struggle to trade gap ups and gap downs. But the principle is always the same. We got to pay attention, know the level, know the setup, just trade it. So when right here, this is the 930 candle, Friday market opened at 397.74. That means first support was at 397 with first resistance at 398.5. So what do you do? You watch for the setup. Watch for either the breakdown of support or the breakout of resistance. Obviously, we short breakdowns of support. If you've been watching my channel long enough, I say this almost all the time. I short breakdown support, long breakouts of resistance. This is a very nice move that was alerting the Discord in the morning. Okay? So, you know, that's... So if we can break out of this triangle pattern, it's possible we can get uh a one directional move but if it gaps up like i said we gotta watch for the uh the uh, resistance are and the uh, and support is okay so above this triangle pattern let's say if it breaks out above three uh, the breakout what i say 396.78 okay let's say if it breaks out that means 98 uh 398.5 is the next resistant level with 400 above okay so Bull case scenario, break out this triangle pattern, clear 398.5 and 400, okay? And we can possibly get our one directional move to the upside. However, if we break down, uh, if, we, if we cannot clear, break out of this triangle pattern and break down support, I got support still at 395, 
the loss of 395 could trigger a move to test the support of this triangle pattern okay below 395 i do have support at 393.5 392 and 390 but the support of the triangle pattern if it decides to come test it the support of it on monday would be uh, at 388.5 so a breakdown of 388.5 would be a breakdown of this triangle pattern and possibly give us that one directional move to the downside at least a tradable one directional move to the downside maybe back down to 390 again okay i mean uh below 388.5 uh, maybe we can go test 380 again that's what i meant all right so you know we go to this uh the daily chart now you guys can see i still got that bear flag yeah, that's that triangle pattern on the 4 hour, but I got that bear flag on the daily chart and the breakout of the bear flag is at is at 399.5. But like I said, give it a zone 399.5 to 400. Above 400, I would favor a one directional move. The RSI is not as overbought as before. It did cool down. So this chop that's been happening did cool down the RSI a bit and the cool down RSI is a good sign. For bulls if they want to break out and continue this this trend since october 13th okay i'm not a market maker i'm just making these videos to give you guys the levels and setup so you guys can know what it looks like anybody can say oh when price goes up or when price goes down but what does it look like when price goes up price goes down what triggers do we need to look out for and this is what i'm getting i'm trying to do right now okay so like i said we'll go back to the four hour Break out this triangle pattern, this falling wedge, whatever you want to call it, all right? Above 397 to be safe, all right? 398.5, 400 still critical resistant levels that I got based on FIB levels. Break that out, and maybe we get our one directional move to the upside. That's when I would swing if we can break this triangle pattern, clear 398.5 and 400, okay? As far as for calls go, if we break 395 and break down 388.5, Especially breaking back down below 390, that which is a very critical level, I would swing puts. Okay, as long as within this triangle pattern, I you know I'm still no matter what I'm a day trader. I'm gonna play it level to level. I'm not gonna be chasing home runs. Okay, but I am also a YouTuber and a Discord guy. Okay, so I want to you know not all my members are gonna be day trading like me or my viewers are gonna be day trading like me. So I want to give you guys setups that can you know good probable setups that can give you guys good swing trading ideas all right so hopefully this time it plays out well because lately all uncle charles's trade idea has been good for like day trading and level to level moves but i'm not serving my swing trading members well so but you know you guys gotta understand i can't move the market all i can do is identify the setups hopefully the setups play out well okay so you guys got my levels Check out that triangle pattern, maybe add it to your own chart. Breakout 397 would be a breakout of this triangle pattern. 398.5, 400 must clear, and I would be bullish, okay? Below 395, that would put back 393.5, 392, 390 in play with 388.5 as a support of this triangle pattern. If it fails, that would be very, very bearish, okay? And, and if we break 390 and break down 388.5, we can possibly go back and test the 380, like I said, all this, which is around the support of this bear flag. Okay, so we break down 380, I would favor a deeper multi-day, maybe even multi-week sell-off to the downside. I would definitely swing puts if this bear flag breaks down. I would definitely swing calls if this bear flag breaks out again. We did try to break out of it. Looks like a liquidity grab. Okay, looks like a liquidity grab. Uh, you know, because we did have a lot of tests there. So AOL zone was possibly right there. It got taken out. Stop loss hunting. So if it breaks out again, it's most likely going to be a legit breakout. But that's if it breaks out. Okay, you guys know the levels. You guys know the setups. Now it's on you guys to trade it unbiasedly in triple Q. Um, triple Q closed at 284.82. I mentioned to you guys had a critical level at 284.88. So once again, we closed just a few cents below that 38.2 fib level, very critical level. So, yeah, I mean, bulls got above it intraday, but bulls need to close above it at the end of the day. So above 284.88 must clear and clear 287.8 as well to break out of this uh, multi-month trend line that I got here. The white multi-month trend line. Also, it's also my scroll to the left more. It's also my 
50% FIB level from March 2020 low to November 2021 high. So a breakout above those two level, I would definitely be bullish. I would swing calls above 287.8 though in, in favor of multi-day uh, breakout or, or melt up if you will okay now to be bearish obviously stay below 284.88 break down next support around 282 280 and the critical support around 275 would definitely uh set off a, set off a multi-day sell-off to the downside with 273 268.7 and 262 in play all right guys tesla Continues to look bearish. I've been mentioning to you guys, okay? This is bearish price action. We back tested this triangle, this massive, massive triangle pattern, okay? After breaking it down back in November 7th, we back tested as a resistant and it continued to push down further. Now back to another critical support level at 177 ish. Now back on November 9th, when we tested a level, RSI was extremely oversold. Now testing it again, we are getting some buy, uh, buying pressure. But the RSI is not as oversold, so maybe it'll have some strength to break, push it down. So if you're a bear on Tesla, you want to see that 177 level get broken down and it could set off a deeper sell-off, okay? Resistant right now is 185.6. If that clears, well, the, the first resistance is around 181.5. And then 185, 185.5 to 186, if that clears, that can give us... Maybe another bounce to the upside. Maybe we'll even test 200 again. We'll see, okay? Other than that, I'm overall bearish on Tesla. Watch that 177 level. Let's end this with the option flow. Filter 500K premiums are above. Overall, very bearish, okay? Now the one sticks out to me. 25, over 25,000 size. Okay, over 589 in premium. Not a lot, but it is a sweep order. Pretty, you know, decently aggressive. Puts 364 strike November 30th, okay? And look at this, 3.9 million, 4.1 million, big size order, 376 strike uh, expiration date for January 20th. So we're still seeing big money, still bearish to the downside. How about Triple Q? Yep, bearish to the downside as well. Look at this on a block order, 4 million. It's usually institutional order, over 5,000 size, some 16, 285 strike. So it's not too aggressive, not too out the money, but it is bearish nonetheless. Okay, and we're going to end this with Tesla again. Built to 500k premiums, 58%. Okay, so they're overall uh, bullish on the Tesla, at least for Friday they were. But look at that. Sweep orders, 1.7 million over 7,000 sides. 100. That's the strike price is 100 for February 17, 2023. They have plenty of time, but big money is overall bearish on Tesla. I'm over bearish on Tesla as well. All right, but we'll see. Price action. You know, will always change my sentiment because I am a sheep trader. All right, guys. So thank you, guys. If you want more content from Uncle Chattis, please consider joining my Discord. I got coupons. Use the coupon when you join because I had some people join recently and didn't use the coupon. So if you decide to join, please use the coupon to get you that $50 off on your first month so you can decide if you want to be part of the group or not. You know, just, you know, just to help out, just to help out, you know. I also have Substack if you guys want to subscribe to that, okay? You guys joining those things would definitely support this channel and encourage Uncle to keep going with this with this journey that I'm on, this YouTube journey that I'm on, okay? It means a lot, but, you know, thank you guys. Peace.